it going, everyone? As you can see, the background has been changed a little bit. I didn't want to film against a background on a wall that had some ugly paint splotches on it. The past couple of videos that you've seen, obviously there's been some issues with the, the video and the audio quality. And so each and every video that I make, I want to try to actually make them better each time and to make sure that I'm thinking about how we can make this more enjoyable for you as it is more visually presentable for me as well. So a bit of better of a background. It'll be still be better later once we're done remodeling, but I hope this will make it at least a little bit more pleasant for you, especially now that I'm wearing a nice preppy tie and a sweater. But anyway, I am now here to talk to you about a topic that I'm always eager to share with you each and every year. Not so because I like crapping on anybody's work, like I'm, I don't want to call out any specific names in this video, but I always enjoy the time of the year where I get to talk about my top 10 least favorite movies of the year. And the reason for this is because sitting through bad movies is kind of like the work end of my hobby. You know, there's a lot of fun times where I get to enjoy my hobby, where I see great films and I get to share my thoughts on them. But then other times it, it isn't as enjoyable because I have to sit through films that or perhaps aren't made well, or perhaps it does just feel like a waste of time. And here, the movies I'm going to mention to you are the ones that I personally suffered through so that you don't have to. But anyway, to start things off, I'm going to list off five dishonorable mentions. Movies that were particularly bad, but not ones that, that were so bad enough to where I felt so triggered and so angered by the experience that I never wanted to sit through it again. They were just very, either very disappointing or just bad to begin with. And those include Sicario, Day of the Soldado, A Wrinkle in Time, The Darkest Minds, The Predator, and Batman Ninja, which also appeared on my recent list of my top 10 most disappointing movies. But now here we go to the actual list. Starting things off, we have at number 10, Venom. Now, this is a pick that I know is going to be pretty controversial because I know there are a lot of people who like this movie. And if you're here watching this video and you're offended by the fact that I chose this pick, that's fine. This is all an exchange of opinions. So if you notice anything on here that I feel is I'm wrong about, just let me know. I feel bad about that if, you know, if it trans upon your feelings. But for me, this is a movie that it tried to do so much and it tried to be so many different things. But I think because there are so many different voices that were trying to pull the movie in one direction or the other, it ended up being such a mess that was cut together very poorly in the editing room. There wasn't enough of the awesome Eddie Brock and Venom uh, dynamic for me to really get invested in. And honestly, this movie just kind of felt like a rushed out product to get more of these Spider-Man movies made. Literally, if you look at it, the movie has 20 minutes of credits and post credit scenes trying to tease other films. And there's 90 minutes of an actual movie where all these characters are poorly developed, the plot is very generic, and it doesn't even go all that far with its Venom uh, storyline potential. Up next, we have the first of two, count them, two anime films to appear on this list, which is Godzilla, Planet of the Monsters. Now, this was a Netflix original film. It was originally re um, released in Japan until Netflix acquired it for uh, American distribution. And this is the first of a trilogy of films that uh, were produced to kind of expand the, the Godzilla story. But I didn't even bother watching the next two movies in this story arc because this first one was just so bad. I don't even want to really bother talking about it because I felt like the whole entire thing was pointless. If you're a fan of Godzilla, you might want to check it out possibly, but even then you may just be even more disappointed than I was. Number eight on the list was The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. Now, when you have a movie where the title suggests that it's based on one of the most beloved and uh, well-known ballets in history, and you only even have like one ballet and a dance number in the movie, you, you kind of have a problem there. <laughs> but otherwise, this movie just felt like another attempt at trying to recreate what Tim Burton did with his Alice in Wonderland remake with Johnny Depp back in the day. And this just came across as derivative, dull, uninspired, and just not fun in any real sense. And the story just felt incredibly underdeveloped to the point where 
It was a huge mess, and it was very cringeworthy too, with poor Keira Knightley giving one of her most embarrassing performances of her whole entire career. Now these next two picks are going to be quite controversial for some people because they are pretty big hits, and I know there are a lot of people who did enjoy them, but I personally just couldn't get anything from them. And the first of which is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Um, an easy film to compare this to would be The Last Jedi, but even though I love that Star Wars film, I use that as an example because Fallen Kingdom was a movie people were looking forward to as a way to kind of correct the issues that the first Jurassic World movie made. And this one just ended up making even more issues. It complicated things. It was a story that ultimately just felt ridiculous and stupid, especially culminating in a finale that is just so against basic human logic that the only reason why I felt like they were trying to set it up is because they're trying to make this... Uh, Spoilers, by the way, to make this setup to where dinosaurs are roaming America. But from point A to point B, how the story progressed, it was just absolutely ridiculous and not any fun at all. It just felt like a huge insult to my intelligence. If they make Jurassic World 3 any more fun or even just logical to begin with, then maybe it might be a good way to retcon what happened with Fall of Kingdom. But as it stands right now, this is the worst in a franchise that is mostly pretty bad movies except for the first one. At number six, this is the first Harry Potter film that I have genuinely hated, and that would be Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Again, to everyone who loved this movie, that's, that's awesome. I, I love that. That's, that's amazing. Every time that someone enjoys a movie that I have issues with, then I'm, I'm happy for them. However, I just couldn't escape the feeling that watching this movie it just confirmed the suspicion that I had that the story kind of didn't really need to be told in the first place. Because even though the first film kind of felt inconsequential to me, it at least still had like point A to point B a clear objective as to what was going on. But this movie, it was hard to even really follow what was taking place. And the storylines that were going on, they were, they were without stakes. There was barely even a reason to get invested in anything. And it honestly just felt like a giant waste of time with which is sad because there were great visual effects and there were good performances from most of the cast, but it was, to be frank, all in vain. Now I promised that two anime films would be, would be presented on this list, and the other one that I'm here to share with you is called Fireworks. Or as, <laughs> uh, as the full title of this movie reads on IMDb, it says, Fireworks, should we see it from the side or the bottom? <laughs> to know, so I'll just leave it at that. But otherwise, this movie is just absolutely insane. Like, I, I barely have any words to describe just how crazy this movie gets in certain situations with, like, its far-fetched, strange plot points, its random musical numbers, and its central romance that honestly just feels very pervy and very tied to, like, teenage sexual fantasies. And if that already didn't sound weird enough, just, if you watch this movie for yourself, I'm sure you'll also be blown away by just how ridiculous it all seems. Trust me, anime is better than this. But if anyone was to watch this movie not having seen any other anime films or shows, this would pretty much confirm their confirmation bias that everything that comes out of Japan is just insanely weird. At number four, we have Mute which was a film that I was particularly disappointed in. It, all, it almost made my top 10 disappointments list because I'm a pretty big fan of um, Duncan Jones' first couple of movies, those being Moon and Source Code. Those are pretty interesting original sci-fi films. And this one was supposed to be a spiritual sequel to, to Moon, actually. But this, for every single reason you can think of, this movie just fails in all those regards. The storyline just there's nothing there, to be honest. Really the only reason I could say that one could watch this movie is to maybe see some interesting production design, and also for uh, Paul Rudd's performance, despite how uh, cringeworthy and how hard he is to watch on screen. But otherwise, this is a waste of time for anyone who wants to get involved with something. And I'm sad to say that, because I do like Duncan Jones as a filmmaker, but this one just didn't work. At number three, we have Winchester. This was one of the first movies that I saw last year, and it definitely set a tone for other horror films that I've watched throughout the year that were just so boring. 
and lifeless and had stories that tried to make you care for something but it just ended up being another generic, cliched, and completely unfrightening mess of a, of a horror film that tried to take something to concept so interesting as the Winchester Mansion, ended up not doing anything with it. Number two is 1517 to Paris by director Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood is a legend, okay? Like, uh, actor or as a director, he's made some amazing work throughout his career and he definitely deserves the, the praise that he's gotten. But I don't know, just, I have no idea how this movie was as bad as it was. Can it be levied on the main actors who were the actual men who were involved in, this, in the true life story of this movie? I don't know. Is it to blame on Eastwood, the screenplay? I don't know. But this movie ultimately takes an idea that seems really cool to dramatize and just makes it feel as pointless and boring as possible. Like it does everything the wrong way. When you get to the point you're eventually going to, you, you feel as if the journey was too much and too long of a slog to really get through in order to reach the point that it gets. All right, here we are number one, guys. The film that despite the fact that I probably found less enjoyment in the 15 to 17 of Paris, I just can't get over how inept and insane and just dumb Slender Man was. <sighs> Look, I'm already fed up with horror films that are dumb, cliched, and have the worst uh, stupidest characters and one can even imagine. But the reason why Slender Man is my number one, beyond the fact that it's worse than any other movie that I saw, is because you can't see a dang thing! Here's what every director and cinematographer for a horror movie should remember. You need to have a movie that is well lit. Because if your audience can't see your movie, especially when you're going to be filming a lot of dark sequences where teenagers are uh, walking around a dark forest at night or they're um, traversing through a dark corridor in a dark library, then you're going to need to have some good light in there because your audience will be able to see a thing and when a scare tactic is trying to be used, like a jump scare, who's going to be able to see the jump scare? Like, nothing in this movie works. Nothing. You can't see a thing and so none of this even works because the film is so dark, uh, dimly lit that it starts to make your eyes droop. And if you did fall asleep in this movie, then that's probably even a better experience for you because the story won't do any favors. And that these actors, these poor actors, were directed in such a way that panders to every single cliche in a teenage uh, specific horror films. And I, I hated every second of it. But I had some pretty self-indulgent fun at the same time watching this movie, just seeing how bad it was. So I don't know, take that as you will. Like, it is the absolute worst movie I saw this year, but there still will be some enjoyment to be had if you want to make fun of something, which you can't do that with my number two pick, so I don't know. But in any case, thank you for watching this video. Like I said, I didn't want to try to point out any specific names in this video because I don't like being someone who criticizes individuals. I shared this video with you for the purpose of trying to dissuade people from films that don't have any moral or entertainment value to them. Because I want people to try to spend their time on things that are actually going to benefit their lives in terms of either bringing them joy or emotional fulfillment or actually teaching them something. And the movies that I talk to you about, they don't provide that. But in any case, thank you for watching. Uh, look forward to my top 10 favorite movies of 2018 list coming soon. And if you like this, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks again, guys. Have a good one.